Before we start with the action, let me show you quick the bike setup for drifting. First things first, you need to protect your bike with a crash cage just in case a small crash when you learn to drift. The next crucial part is the tire pressure, don't go below 2.0 bar. The more pressure you add, the more stable are your drifts. The next setup advice is the suspension. Make your suspension harder, that gives you a better feel for the grip on the rear tire and you don't have this wobbly feeling while you're drifting if it's too soft. Those were the setup tips, now it's time for the drift action, so let's warm up the tires with some rolling burnouts. Drift is a combination of three things. First, the entry of the drift, the second is the drift itself, and the third one is the exit of the drift. So let me show you how to enter the drift. By entering the drift, you need to lock the rear tire with the rear brake and simultaneously pulling the clutch. Once you master the power braking, it's time for the next small step. It's actually another power brake with a slide on the end. Why is that important? Because you are getting a perfect angle to start the drift. You are still holding the clutch while you are braking. Once you are feeling comfortable enough, after the power brake turn, it's time to slip your rear tire. To do that, you need to release the clutch and add 50% of the throttle at the maximum angle. Once you mastered all three steps, you are all set for drifts. If you are too close to the high cider, try to do the low cider. You do that by adding more throttle to lose the grip on the back tire and you can lean and slide the bike on the floor. To make your first drift steps easier, you can use your leg to stabilize your drift and it helps you also to jump down from the bike faster in case of a crash. Man, those drifts are so fun! When you finally master the basic drifts, then you can start to play with some combinations. Damn, 